No, all right. Okay, so we're gonna keep going with sauces and soups and stuff this week, because there's so much to learn about them. So I'm going to share screen. Okay, <clears throat> let me move this stuff. So just for starters, just to give you guys an idea. So I did my, you know, I like doing everything from around the globe. Um, but just examples of what you guys might have at your own house that are considered sauces, okay? So in Italy, this is considered a sauce. This is balsamic, this is balsamico, okay? So it's made from grapes, the grape musk. It's very sweet, it's a vinegar, but a lot of these ones that are aged don't have that acidic taste of vinegar. They're just very sweet. And this with extra virgin olive oil would be considered a sauce that they would put on like grilled radicchio, um, steaks, I mean, pretty much anything. Another one that you might have in your house is I love this stuff, is <clears throat> Weber's horseradish sauce, okay? Typically, some sort of cream base, fresh ground horseradish, egg yolks, <clears throat> pretty tasty. Another sauce you might have in your house is hot sauce. I love Red Hot, so have that at the house. Another sauce, soy sauce, okay? Soy sauce, you can put directly on food, um, but soy sauce is like the base of a lot of other sauces too. All right, so people add stuff to their soy sauce to make a whole new sauce. This one is called sambal, sambal. It's a ground chili paste and it's saucy, but it is absolutely delicious. Like I put this in eggs. Um, I'll put it in chicken stock with ginger and do like a nice spicy chicken sauce. <clears throat> okay. Another one which you might not consider a sauce, maple syrup. This is a sauce, technically, because it's not, it is cooked too. So they basically tap a maple tree, where they drill a hole into it with a spigot, they drain out the, the maple sap or shag bark, whatever they want to call it. Um, and then it's, it's not ready to eat at that point, but then they cook it down. So they cook the, the syrup until it's got the consistency they want, then they sell it. But that's a sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Another one. This has so many different things. This is vinegar, molasses, sugar, water, salt, onions, anchovies, garlic, cloves, tamarind, natural flavorings, and chili pepper. <clears throat> so somebody came up with all that to make Worcestershire sauce. And that's one of those sauces that if I ever cook any sort of stew or anything with beef, um, I always put Worcestershire sauce in it just because it'll take your basic kind of, you know, beef, beef flavoring and just multiply it. Okay. <clears throat> so just to give you some ideas, you probably have sauces at your house. Um, I want to show you guys this clip. Let's play this. Hold on. Okay, so these are different sauces you're going to see from around, the, they're from around the world, okay? It might not be what you're thinking of as sauce, but these are, typ these are considered sauces. A sauce to some people acts as a meal accompaniment and a taste enhancer to others. Each culture has its own unique sauce that complements their respective cuisine. A sauce adds flavor to any simple dish. While some are spicy which may set your mouth on fire, while others are not. The spicy elements depend on the place of origin. Have a look at the famous sauces around the world. Ponzu is a famous sauce from Japan. The taste of this sauce is just like soy sauce but has a citrus kick. You can use this sauce as a dressing on salads, for marinating the meat, and for a dipping sauce for seafood. Coriander chutney is a must-have chutney or sauce in any Indian household. It enhances the taste of many Indian dishes and acts as a great accompaniment for pakaras and samosas. Try it as dipping sauce it or as a spread in a vegetable sandwich. The method is easy and the taste is refreshing. Chermula is a sauce from North Africa. Some of the ingredients are garlic, coriander, parsley, saffron, and cilantro. Traditionally, it is served with grilled seafood. 
You can have this sauce with roasted vegetables and grilled meats too. Pebra is a famous sauce from Chile. Chileans have this spicy sauce during barbecues and asados. It is most enjoyed over toasted bread, but it goes well with salads, meats, and empanadas. The recipe varies with region to region, with tomatoes, cilantro, and habanero peppers being the main ingredients. Sriracha is a famous sauce from Indonesia. It combines the ingredients of herbs, citrus, peppers, and fish sauce. Traditionally, it is made using mortar and pestle. This makes it chunkier and less acidic as compared to other Southeast Asian hot sauces. Tikmali is sauce which originates from the country Georgia. The taste is tangy and sour. People call it a cross between chutney and ketchup. It is usually served with meats and potato dishes and mixed in stews. It is a plum sauce whose taste varies according to the ripeness of the plums as they are either green ones or red ones. Gokujang is a hot sauce from South Korea having fermented soybeans, chilies, and sticky rice as its ingredients. It has a thick consistency and used as a finishing sauce like sriracha, but it is perfect to use in cooking. You can use this sauce to coat fried or grilled vegetables and meats or add it to soups. Try this hot Bajan pepper sauce from Barbados, and you will forget that Tabasco sauce ever existed. Locals love it and are proud of it. Mustard, scotch bonnet, a Caribbean pepper, and vinegar are its ingredients. The best use of this sauce is to put on seafood and meat. Malhoe Pimentado originates from Brazil. This sauce is versatile as it can be enjoyed as a dip for roasted vegetables, marinade for meat, and seasoning for grilled meats. It is popularly known as a hot sauce, but you can vary the spiciness or the heat according to your liking while retaining the flavorful taste. Shrewsbury sauce originates from Britain. This sauce is made with savory ingredients like flour, butter, and red currant jelly. It is a great accompaniment with any pork dish. Hateri is a popular sauce from Turkey. It is made with ingredients like olive oil, mint, parsley, and Greek yogurt. It works well on appetizers like toast or crackers and even grilled fish. Chukalaka is a spicy relish originating from South Africa. It is made using basic ingredients like tomatoes, onions, peppers, and beans. It is full of flavors and has a thick consistency. It works well with side dishes and as a topping for meat and bread. <clears throat> Agrodolce is another famous sauce which originates from Italy. Though Italy is popular for giving many tomato-rich sauces like marinara and ragas, agrodolce is no less. The name translates to sour sweet, and it tastes the same. It is a sticky sauce that has sugar and balsamic vinegar combined. You can customize your dishes of fruits and vegetables using this sauce. Nam Jim Jiyo is a popular sauce originating from Thailand. There are many sauces from Thailand, but this one stands out because of its smoky and sharp flavor. The main ingredients are toasted rice powder and dried chili powder with fish sauce, lime juice, and other herbs. These are then mixed and served with any grilled vegetable or meat. Guisacaca is an avocado salsa from Venezuela. Since it has a rich flavor, it goes well with everything from grilled steak, salads, and tacos. It can be spiced up by adding peppers or hot sauce to the mix. If you are looking for an extreme hot sauce, then it has to be Tabasco. It originated from Louisiana and is made of habanero chilies, the hottest chilies in the world. Shug is associated with Israeli cuisine and is originated from Yemen. There are two varieties of Shug green and red. The green one is made with olive oil, green chilies, cilantro, and garlic, whereas the red one is made with tomatoes, red chilies, and other spices. Peri Peri is a popular sauce from Portuguese. It is made from bird's eye chilies. You must have seen Peri Peri chicken in many restaurants which have the taste of the hot Peri Peri. The spice is manageable because of the mild taste of peppers and other acidic elements like lime and vinegar to cut the heat. 
Harissa originates from Africa. It is made from chilies and cumin until they are granular instead of being smooth. It is found everywhere in parts of North Africa just like mustard sauce and ketchup in other parts of the world. Since it has olive oil and garlic, the sauce is spicy. There is no wonder to guess the place from where salsa belongs. There is a wide variety of salsa found in Mexican cuisine. You can choose any type of salsa in tortilla wraps according to your taste. Most typical salsa used is green and red, made from ingredients like tomatoes and avocados, as well as, onion and garlic. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified when we post new videos. All right, <clears throat> so I know there was a lot. But as you saw, like, a lot of these, like even sriracha, you know, if you think about where these sauces come from, typically it's all local ingredients <clears throat> and it's just a mixture of, you know, like they'll have tomatoes growing and they'll just pull stuff from the garden. You know, this is what we have fresh right now. We mix this up. Another, I'm going to show you this. Hold on. A sauce to some. Okay. Um, another thing is I want to show you this up here. See this mixture? This is herbs, garlic, salt, chilies, um, whatever they have. Maybe cilantro. A lot of countries have these things. This is chimichurri. Okay, there's chimichurri. There's another one that was from Brazil, um, one from Peru. Italy has one real close called pesto. Um, a lot of countries will take <clears throat> whatever herbs they have available and, you know, some stuff from the garden. Like if they naturally have chilies growing there like habaneros and stuff, they'll grind all these things up and make a sauce. So what we think of as sauce is like ketchup. You know, most countries sauces are stuff like this. Okay, so like a pesto that is served with a fish um, or something very spicy, like they'll use the herbs, lemon juice, you know, they'll pull, you know, lemons, oranges from the trees around them, um, grind it up with some fresh onions, just stuff they have around. Um, Fish sauce, which they just mentioned, is uh, basically fermented fish. Um, if you smell it, you'd probably just be like, oh my god. But if you think about how these things come about, <clears throat> is they've, we've not always had refrigeration. So they would let things ferment. And then they would end up using it. First, they, somebody would try it. And they're like, oh wow, that's actually pretty good. They would pickle things. Um, they make these sauces with a bunch of heavy lemon juice and maybe some vinegar, and they realize they can hold, they can keep these around for a little bit longer um, because they're not going to go bad. Um, and then take like how we ended up with dried things. Like you have, <clears throat> like in Mexico, they use a lot of dried chilies um, or like the chipotle is like a smoked chili. Typically, if you... I've actually seen pictures of this where they'll pull all the chilies and they'll lay them on top of the rooftops and let them dry out because once again, there's not a lot of places to refrigerate these things, but they want to keep using them. Sorry, it's a beep. Um, so they want to keep using them. <clears throat> so they'll dry them out, they'll smoke them. Um, and then if you have a, pe a chili that's like, say you have a, a jalapeno, it's jalapeno, right? Or, or like <clears throat> when it's fresh, it's jalapeno, you smoke it and now you have chipotle. You know what I mean? So um, ancho, wahio, a lot of those different peppers are something, you know, you have an Anaheim pepper now and when it's smoked, it's called this, okay? Um, same principle. They want to preserve the stuff that they have. So they'll, you know, cure it, smoke it, dry it, whatever. And then the same thing with these, they'll pack it and um, they'll put salt, they'll put vinegar, they'll put lemon. And that way they can keep these sauces for a little bit longer. Um, this is another one that's called aioli. Uh, you know, that's a big trend now. Um, basically all aioli is, is like mayonnaise with garlic in it and whatever else they want to add to it. This one's bacon aioli. <clears throat> These are really good. You wouldn't think of mayonnaise being a great sauce, but typically all mayonnaise is, is a little bit of a, it's egg yolks, oil, and a little bit of mustard, some, you know, if you want to add pepper to it, whatever. Um, you blend that up, like emulsify it, then you add flavored ingredients to it. So you can add your, your ground up or roasted uh, garlic, you can add your bacon to it, 
you can add lemon juice to it, whatever, and then <clears throat> serve that on top of sandwiches. People serve them with fries. I mean, they're just endless things. Um, here's a soup made, I forget the name of the sauce this one was made from, but I think it was South, South Africa. But basically, you know, they're gonna cook, they'll make like a fish broth, which I have a video in here on one of these. <clears throat> they'll make like a fish broth, add some of their, their ground up tomato, onion, uh, pepper mixture into the sauce, okay? I do this too, you know, like, like all, I cooked something tonight where I took chicken thighs and I added diced tomatoes and juice in there and some tomato puree into it and then a bunch of sambal and <clears throat> just cooked it, slowly cooked it with chicken broth and it just shreds up the meat and then the sauce is just extremely flavorful. You know, you're just combining all these sauces. You start with the mother sauce of you know, chicken velute or whatever, and you bring it down. Um, and with the mother sauces and all that, that is mainly French style cuisine. All these sauces on this page right now are not considered mother sauces, but they are sauces. Okay, um, this is a really good video. So this is called Ponzu. <clears throat> it's made from soy sauce. We made this at Wolfgang Pucks a lot, and ours was basically... Um, Mirin, mirin wine and lemongrass and jalapenos and um, lots of lime and then soy sauce and then it gives this really good if you like soy sauce where it's real salty but this brings out the really good sweetness of soy or it with adds sweetness to the soy and it's delicious but this is Andrew, Andrew Zimmern um, he's going to do a beef what's it called tataki we're going to watch this and then uh, we'll wrap it up Traditional Japanese beef tataki, seasoned rare beef, charred on the outside, rare on the inside, chili oil, sesame oil, homemade ponzu, which is something that most people never see, I think is the real star of the dish. Because we love to talk about culinary literacy here, I want you to know how to make a real ponzu sauce. Now this has lemon and rice wine vinegar, soy and ginger, and floating in there, is a piece of kelp called kombu, and you let this mixture sit overnight, 12 to 24 hours in the refrigerator, and all the ginger mingles in there, the kombu gives a very earthy flavor, and before I use it, I like to strain it. So the sauce, we're just gonna set aside. I've got this beautiful piece of beef. I split this in half. I will usually make two of these. I want to season this fairly aggressively. I want to do the same with black pepper. And what I'm going to do with the sesame seeds is I want to season the outside of this with those sesame seeds. Not too much. And when they fry in the oil, they're going to get all roasty toasty and then they'll rehydrate a little bit in the sauce. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil to this pan and lay it down away from you. That way no oil will spatter back at you. And now what we're gonna do is essentially blacken it on all three sides over high heat. While that's searing, we'll make some of our garnish. I'm gonna stack my scallions here. The whites of the scallion are gonna have a much stronger onion flavor. I kind of want that too. That crust right there is what I'm looking for on all three sides. A nice pronounced charred crust that's dark brown. Browning is a culinary term and brown is the color of flavor. So now this is browned on all of our sides. I'm reserving it to this plate where we will let it rest so that all the juices that are pushed out to the edge near that crusty exterior go back in between those fibers of protein. This is rested and we're ready to assemble our dish. I like a nice, sharp, thin edge blade. Just wanna make some nice, thin slices. And the best thing that you can do is work backwards. Because we rested it, all of that wonderful fat and flavor has gone back into our beef. I just put one ladle like that, and then I'll put a small bowl on the table. Sesame oil. Some hot chili oil. Green first. White second. 
A little bit of salt on the beef. Just some of that fresh sesame. And then some of that fresh garlic chive flavor is great on there if you have Chinese garlic chives around. That is super simple beef tataki. There is nothing better than charred rare beef with a really good homemade ponzu sauce. <clears throat> I must agree with that, man, because <clears throat> that dish right there is absolutely delicious. Um, especially with the rare beef, you know, you can just put, just eat it as is. I mean, if you want to serve rice with that, like steam white rice, it's good too. But yes. let's go. Okay, so I think we're at like 20 something minutes, <clears throat> which is pretty good. So um, we can continue on with this one tomorrow. So this is, we're gonna hit up is the, just the mother sauces. So go back to French style. Um, and then I wanna do another day where we go over like Italian style sauces, stuff from the United States. And then we'll get into soups in about a week, just because there's so many different soups available and <clears throat> you really need to learn, you know, the different styles of cooking with those for between bisques and um, chowders and thin soups and cold soups. So with the sauces, you know, that's what I want you guys to understand. Like there's the mother sauces that they always preach about in culinary school, but then you have, you know, your sambal, you know, which is <clears throat> just so delicious. It's, you know, you read is chili, salt, acidic acid, put, uh, potassium sorbate, da, 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 da. But the mainly it's just ground chilies and, <clears throat> you know, probably vinegar and whatever else they want to put in there. But things like that, um, chimichurris, um, pico de gallo, um, pestos, guacamoles, you know, salsa verde. Those are all sauces. They're just not French. So when you have your bechamels and hollandaise and velouté's, those are French, you know. Um, but I want you to get in the mindset that those aren't the only things available. So, <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah, so I want you guys to see that one, especially because that's like one of my favorite things ever is that, that sauce. Okay. So <clears throat> there'll be questions on here and, uh, we will continue on later.